This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Pope Francis made some strong statements regarding Noah's flood and the possibility of another worldwide deluge destroying all of mankind. I'd like to read to you from an article by the Daily Mail dated March 2, saying this. Pope Francis has warned that mankind is facing a second great flood caused by climate change, unless leaders act to fix corruption and injustice. The 84-year-old said that in the story of the great flood in the Bible, God used his wrath to punish injustice and clean up the world. He then added that humanity is facing another great deluge, perhaps due to a rise in temperature and the melting of glaciers. That is what will happen now, if we continue on the same path, he said. While discussing justice, Francis brings up the example of the biblical flood, which destroyed the whole world except for Noah, who was deemed virtuous enough to survive. The flood itself may have been a myth, Francis says, but it is used as an example to show how God uses wrath to punish injustice and right wrongs in the world. Now, in this program, I will do something which I normally do not do on the Standing Watch program, but I think right now it's important. I will read to you from the Bible as to what it's being said about Noah's flood. And by the way, Noah was not the only one who survived. All of those in the ark survived. The animals which were placed in the ark survived. And of course, his family survived as well. But I'd like to read to you, beginning in Genesis chapter 6, verses 7 to 8, which says this. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Continuing in verse 12. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted the way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Then in chapter 7, beginning in verse 4, For after seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And then in verse 17 of Genesis 7, now the flood was on the earth forty days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed fifteen cubits upward, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. Now, I have quoted these passages to show you that according to the Bible, this was a worldwide flood. It wasn't limited to just a small location where Noah lived, as some have suggested. It was a worldwide flood destroying everything on the earth, as we have just read, in that flood. But then you see God made a promise after Noah and his family and the 
animals had left the ark. And we read that in Genesis chapter 9 and in verse 11. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And he also says in verse 15, the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. You see, these are promises God made, promises which he will keep. And of course, he is talking about a rainbow, saying that once I see that rainbow, I will be reminded of that covenant I made with all living creatures, so to speak, that I will not destroy them again in a flood. So the implication is that it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because of climate change or whatever. It's just not going to happen. Now, it's important to understand that this is not a myth, that this actually did happen, that this was actually a factual event in the way the Bible describes it. Now, either we believe what is being said in the Bible about these things too, or we might as well throw the Bible away. Then we have no basis for believing in the inspiration of the Word of God. Then we might as well spiritualize everything away, saying, oh, that's just figurative, and it has no bearing in fact. Now, let me just say that Jesus Christ believed in the facts of how the Bible describes the flood. Let me turn with you to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and he talks about his return. And many people, including professing Christians, don't believe that either anymore, that Christ will come back to this earth at a time of great turmoil, yes, but not at a time of a worldwide flood. And he says in Matthew chapter 24, in verse 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, no, not even the angels of heaven, and parallel scriptures add, not even the Son, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and didn't know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. You see, Jesus Christ said these things. He was there when it happened. He was the Son of God. He was the one through whom God the Father created everything. He was the one who spoke to Noah. Because later on Christ would say, you have never heard the voice of the Father. So he was there. He is an eyewitness as to what happened. Also, interestingly enough, the Apostle Peter confirmed also his belief that the flood, Noah's flood, was real. And, of course, the Pope today claims to be a successor of the Apostle Peter, which, of course, he is not. But nevertheless, let's read 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse 3. And it says in there, know this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget. Other translations have here, they do not want to know. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. Again, either we believe these testimonies, or we don't, because obviously Peter also had talked to Christ, who had confirmed to him the reality of what happened. You see, the flood was real. It was a worldwide flood. It covered and destroyed the entire earth. And all the people and all the animals described in the scriptures we have just read. But also God said he will never ever bring a flood like that on the earth again. The idea that the earth could be destroyed by a worldwide flood or a deluge caused by climate change or whatever is clearly unbiblical. The story of Noah's flood is not a myth. As I said, it's true. 
And Jesus and Peter and many others, of course, many other writers in the Bible, believed it as being true and factual. And we had better believe it too, because Christ makes a clear connection between the flood and the times of the flood and the time when he is going to come back. And his return has come near. In order to help you to understand more about the flood, how it came about, how God used certain events to bring it about, and proving that it is actually factual, we have prepared two booklets. One is The Theory of Evolution. A fairy tale for adults, question mark. Because the flood is one of the many examples, one of the many proofs, that evolution is just wrong and a fairy tale, and it is not factual. And then we have another booklet, Heavens and Earth, Before and After the First Man. These two booklets go together, and I would encourage you to order either free copies of these booklets, they're absolutely free for the asking, or to even read them on our website because they're all posted online. So I want to thank you for your attention, and I leave you until next time as Norbert Link for the Church of the Eternal God. Thank you very much. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.